Hi, my name's Dale, and welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks, your YouTube channel dedicated to everything metal. This is part four of the Ultimate Metrology Center, Making the Drawers. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Metal Supermarkets, and there are more than 70 stores. When they contacted me and said they wanted to sponsor this channel, I was so excited because I know with their support, I'm going to be able to do bigger and better projects for you guys. So check them out on the web and find the closest location to you. The next item up we need to build are the drawers. Drawers are really interesting because there's a lot of engineering that you want to look at in the design of your drawer. You have to add strength to the sheet metal to make sure it can sustain the weight. If we look at the material we're working with, this is 16 gauge, we can see there's a lot of flex in it. The drawer design I came up with is kind of unorthodox, but it is the correct way to build a drawer with the equipment that I have. Now, I don't have a finger brake that's set up and working. So a lot of you guys will say I should be using my finger brake. Well, trolls, I don't have a finger brake that is working, so I have to work around that. And that's what I want to show you in this video is how I worked around that and also how I came up with the design of the drawer. So these drawers are 27 inches long or deep by 38 inches wide. They are a very large drawer and they have a lot of potential to bend in on themselves, so we have to counteract that. Now, like I was talking about the sheet metal, how flimsy it is until you start adding bends to it. Some of the bends we're going to do to it are on the front and the back, but also in the middle, we took the bead roller and put these grooves in here, and these grooves really help stiffen up the center. Now, other things you have to look at on stiffening up a drawer is these sides. So if we look at just an ordinary piece of paper, it's very flimsy. But if we bend up the sides, we're going to add a lot more structure to the drawer. And all of a sudden, it has a lot more rigidity. But it still has the potential to buckle in, as you can see here and here. So what we want to do is add an extra bend. Now if we look at it, see this side bends. The other side doesn't. So if we were to put a bend all the way around it, we get a lot more stability because we don't want these sides folding in under weight. Well, you can't always do that. So I've set up on the back side to give that rigidity. On the front side, because of the drawer face I'm going to put on it, it's going to also add rigidity. But here on both ends, what I did is unorthodox is I ended up going in with a piece of eighth inch flat steel bar and welding that into position. So this material here is actually 16th gauge, but this is eighth inch, and that is going to give me that stiffness that I need on the sides. And this is what I say is unorthodox in my technique in building these drawers, because normally what you would do is you'd fold up the ends and fold up the sides and weld the seams. But because I don't have a finger break, I can't do that, so this was my alternative. But it's also great because it's stiffened it up. Now, if you have a finger break and can do all the bends, you do want to add this additional bend here on these sides to help stiffen it up. Now, some companies will roll it over completely. Some will do kind of a stair step. You'll have to look at what you want to do. What I like about this design is I get to use the full space of this without compromising any of the structure or the strength in it. The drawer glides that I've come up with are these. I bought them, of course. They are a full extension, 27-inch ball bearing with a soft close and an automatic close. So at the last inch, it closes on itself, which is great because I don't know about you guys, I have a hard time closing my drawers. <laughs> it just doesn't sound right, does it? And these are designed for 150 pound capacity. Now I have taken this drawer that I've already tested. This was kind of a test drawer, but it's working out really well, so I'll probably end up using it. 
is I suspended it between a couple boards and I actually stood on it to see if it could handle my weight and I weighed about 170, 80, 90. Well, it was the Christmas holiday, so I'm probably weighing in right now at about 195. We're going to use the Jensen brake on this. And if you recall in an earlier video, I'll put a link to it, I showed how this thing operates. It's all pneumatic, and it is a scary machine. And it's cool to use, though. It is so much easier to use than having to bend up things manually. And I set this up in such a way that I bend this lip first. Very simple, but it's a short bend, and I was having a hard time getting that Jensen to grab onto it because it needs to be completely rebuilt. It's not fitting together as well as I'd like. There is a lot of trial and error in getting that figured out. Then we do the second bend to the back and just bring that up. This is a two inch drawer we're working on. Pretty simple. We're just going to measure it and check it. And then we bring it over to the other side and bend it. This is the way I engineer and build these drawers, and it's really based on my needs and the equipment that I have. And you have to remember that the equipment you have is what you have to work with. That's your strengths and your weaknesses in your shop. And a good machinist or fabricator does not blame his equipment for what he doesn't have. That's your pocketbook you blame for that. With that being said, let's talk about the welding. I want to talk about how we're going to put this end panel on this drawer. I've purposely got it stressed a little bit this way, and what that helps me do is hold the metal in place, but we'll also use magnets. Our goal here is to get a very, very tight fit, and a lot of you would say that's impossible, but because we have a hammer, it makes it a lot easier. So what we end up doing is we tack this into place. And if there's any bulges, which is usually in the corners, we'll tap those into position, bend that metal in to get a better fit. Now we're going to use about 125 amps. And what we've got here is we've got two different thicknesses of metal. We've got 8th inch and we've got 16th gauge. And we're setting our temperature for the thickest metal. So the way you set a temperature with a TIG torch, a general rule of thumb is for every thousandth of an inch, you give you an amp of heat. An eighth of an inch is 0.125, so we're going to go 125 amps. It's a good general rule to start out with. When I first started this, I was kind of splitting the difference between the amperage with the thinness of the 16 gauge, 60,000, and the thickness of the eighth inch. And I was going about 100 amps, and it just wasn't quite giving me the penetration I wanted. I did a couple drawers that way, and then I just kept upping the amperage until I was happy. And basically, I settled on for the thickness of this material. So let's get this tacked together. So I'm having a little trouble welding this. If you saw, there's a lot of sparks coming off of that. That is because this edge was plasma cut and I didn't clean it off, but I still powered through the weld. It should be fine if this was a gas tank. It wouldn't be fine, but this is just a drawer. So let's flip this over. I'm going to clean this edge up really quick so it does weld a lot better. I really like, I call it a weld positioner. Um, this came off, it was like a drill press of some sort. All I know is I've uh, repurposed it to work for my needs. I can control the height of it, as you can see, quite easily. And I can also control this bar. Um, so I'm going to come in here, I'm going to weld this up. 
like I said, we can get a tight fit because we've got a hammer. So let's uh, start welding. Your torch angle here is really critical because we need to push that heat down. And I always look at a TIG torch as exactly that, as a torch with energy. And energy can force something into a direction. And we're actually trying to take this thinner metal and weld it into that thicker edge. So that your angle is really critical to be right on top and push that energy right into it so this melts into here because this thinner metal actually is kind of your welding rod. Get it pushed in so you get great penetration. What was great about welding this up is it's all TIG welded. And it's TIG welded without any filler rod because it's such a flush fit between the eighth inch material and the 16th gauge that fit is so tight that I can literally just add heat to it and bond the metal. This is the end of part four. Part five is putting it all together. If you like this video, let me know in the comments. Also give me a thumbs up and share with your friends. And until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.